vendredi. In this video, I will present you layout and constraints, and in particular, VFL. VFL is the name of a language that is called Visual Format Language. Auto layout was introduced in iOS 6, and this is this idea of having constraint management, because at this time, uh, they were starting to have a larger uh, variety of devices and of screen size. And so it was necessary to elaborate a mechanism that could handle that in a more easy way. Uh, so you can set up constraints and uh, this is a way to reason without considering the screen size. You will set up constraints and the constraints will be solved dynamically depending on the device your application is executing on. There are several ways to reach auto layout. The first one, I will call it the very complex way for me, which is storyboard, and you already experimented it. Uh, there is a, what I call the complex way, which is to directly use an entity called NS Layout Constraint, which is a class, and that will not be presented because we will use the easy way visual format language and in fact the easy way follows the same principle as what I call the complex way uh, but for me it's more natural because you are expressing thanks to strings with instruction of a real language put in these uh, strings uh, you specify constraints in the exact same philosophy that you could do this way. So by knowing this one, you more or less know how to do with the other one. Uh, this one will be more compact and this one will be more verbose. Okay, and of course this one will be provided to you by just having a look at the Fantastic Manual. So in this video and in this course we will use constraints but by means of VFL. Principles are quite simple. In fact, you create a view in a view, and if you consider the UI view class or its inherited uh, variations, uh, it embeds several mechanisms. Uh, the first thing it embeds is uh, mechanisms to deal with constraints. And uh, this is an attribute that you can set to false, and if you set to false this attribute, it means that you will make use of auto layout. And the default value is true. So when you create a UI view, you don't have auto layout activated, but you can activate it. Okay. And then if you decide to activate auto layout by setting this attribute to false, you can build constraints and you have a class for that. A constraint is described within an NS layout constraint and this is true for any constraint. And in fact you have a method, I give you the name in Swift and in Objective-C, that allows you to build a NS layout constraint by means of a string, okay, which is given here, which is expressed in VFL, and also you can have some additional information uh, by means of dictionaries, you will see lots of examples very soon, that allow you to make some associations between logical entities and real numbers or real views. And in fact, uh, with this way, you can build these constraints. And then you apply these constraints to the enclosed views. Okay, so you have this method, okay, you activate these constraints. In fact, you are using an array of NS layout constraints, uh, that is a pass as a parameter. And what is of interest is if you have a set of constraints, you can reuse them from one subview to another one. So you can build the full set of constraints and then just apply these constraints to uh, the uh, view, but you can also apply it to another view, etc. etc. You can share part of the constraints, etc. For sake of consistency, it's really uh, useful. Let's just have a quick look at the VFL grammar. Okay, so you define the axis you are working on, then the relation to the super view or its distance, then you have a mandatory part which is the view that is concerned, but you may have also some additional constraints, several, uh, probably uh, setting up a, a constraint relatively to other views, and in fact you can also end by some relative 
proximity to the superview. Uh, the axis is h two points or v two points or nothing. If you state nothing, then by default it's an horizontal constraint. Super will be represented by that. Okay, basically you represent the border or one border. So the first one is the left border. The second one is the right border. If you are setting up horizontal constraint, otherwise it's top and bottom. Uh, the distance is a value in between two uh, strokes. Okay, and the view is represented between brackets. It has an ID and you can set a dimension and the dimension is the size of the view within the axis you are dealing with. Okay. ID is any sort of identifier and in fact you will have to find it in a dictionary to make a relation between this identifier which will be then a string and a real view and dimension is a value in between parentheses. Okay. A value, it can be a value associated to a priority, okay, or an identifier, and in fact, an identifier then will allow you to have a distance you can dynamically change without changing the layout definition itself, okay. It's a sort of alias, and I say uh, uh, small space, and small space, for example, is uh, 10 points, while I can also state uh, large space, and then large space is uh, 30 points. You can set values as integer values, but also you can associate them to a priority with this at symbol, okay? And in fact, it means that you are providing a priority to this information. And in fact, uh, if there is a conflict between uh, several uh, constraints, then uh, the priorities will help the system to solve the problem. Okay. Basically, the priority is a number between 0 and 1000. 1000 means it's required. Uh, lower values mean it's high or low priority constant. And then usually you pass to uh, the uh, method that allows you to apply these uh, constraints. You pass two dictionaries, or up to two dictionaries, one to associate identifiers to views, and another one to associate identifier to metrics, to values. Okay. The first one is mandatory, the second one uh, can be optional. Uh, there are other operators that can be useful. Equal equal uh, means that you can have several views. You said that the width of uh, a given view is equal to the width of another view. Okay, and then uh, the system will automatically compute what is the uh, final width according to the size of the device. And you can also set that it's less or equal or greater or equal than a given value. So then it means that here you are setting as distance, for example, a minimum distance or a maximum distance, and then uh, the uh, system uh, is able to compute layouts according to these instructions. Do not be worried. Concrete examples are coming very soon. So let's have a quick look on this example that just propose some various type of layouts. Okay, there are seven different layouts. And for these layouts, you also have the correspondence when the device is in landscape mode. Okay, so you see it once again. Okay, I can show you how it works this way. Okay, you see this is in fact the same constraints, but they are applied with another orientation of the device. So let's now have a look on a large device. So you can see that the layouts are adapted, but to the size of this large device. And if I change orientation, once again, you see that the constraints are also adapted to the new height and the new width of the device. So let's have a look on code. Uh, I will put everything in uh, the view controller. Okay, you will understand soon why. And also uh, you probably observe that this application has some features uh, that are tab bars that you are not aware right now. 
Uh, this is not a problem, we will see that later, and I will not detail this part of the code, of course. So let's have the, the basis of the view controller. Here, very classical, I create some local variables, red, yellow, and label. These are the elements that could be uh, arranged. I set up uh, everything in an init. This is the uh, tab bar part you don't have to deal with. Uh, here I'm uh, creating uh, all the elements and adding them in the subview. And according to uh, the selected display, which depends in fact of uh, the way I have created my view controller. You see that on my application I have several view controllers. Okay, I will apply one of these display functions that will just make arrangements, but instead of doing it by computing coordinates uh, based on the uh, percentage of the width and of the, of the eggs of the, of the device, or computing uh, numbers with an increment, etc., I will just specify some constraints. So let's have a look on display one. Display one, so here I have my dictionary that makes a relation between R, Y, and L, and the corresponding views, red, yellow, and label, okay? And then I create an empty array of constraints, of NS layered constraints, and I first set that in the vertical, I have R, that, vertic that, that eighth vertical distance is 100 points, okay? And I also state that in horizontal, the view R is 200 points width, okay? So R, of course, will refer to uh, self.head. Then, this is uh, just setting up the width and eighth of the head view, but here I set up how this view is located in its super view, okay? And so I, I say vertical, vertical uh, constraints, so this, this direction, and I say that I'm 30 points away from the super view, which is here the top of the super view. Okay, the reference to the super view. And here, I say that horizontally, I am 20 points away from the left border. And no more constraints. And then I activate my constraints to the current view, and I get this. So this is what I showed you in the application. This is uh, how it looks in a small device, but you saw that it was also uh, displayed appropriately in a large device. Let's have a look on the second uh, display function. Here I have two dictionaries. The first one that makes an association between logical name of views and views, and the second one that makes an association between logical values and uh, real numbers. So I state that v space is 30, h space is 10, and uh, I would say h red is 100. Okay, so I state here that uh, the size vertically is 100, okay. Here I state that uh, vertically it's uh, v space away from the border of the super view, okay. And here I state that R is equally separated from each border left and right, okay, because it's on horizontal uh, constraint from each space from the border in each side, okay? And so if I have a look at it, it looks like that, okay? And you saw how it looks also in a large device. Display free, display free, uh, so I, I drop the uh, distance uh, dictionary, the matrix dictionary, so I don't uh, provide it anymore, but uh, I could do it, uh, but it's simpler. So here uh, I still have uh, only uh, red that is uh, proposed, and I say that, okay, from the top is 30 points, from the bottom is 60, and it's 10 points on every uh, direction, okay? And then, no surprise, I get this. 
Let's be a bit more complex. And now I'm activating yellow and red, okay? I just set easy then to true for the label, okay? So it's exactly the same. Here I have a vertical constraint for R, a vertical constraint for Y, and Y of course refers to self.yellow. Then I state that there is from the left border 20 points, then I have R view, then I have 10 points, then I have Y view, then I have 20 points, and then I have the right border of the screen. Here the upper view at the size of the screen, but in fact is the right border of the enclosing view. Here I state that vertically R is 30 uh, points away from the top, similar things for y, okay, and here I state that horizontally r and y have the same width, so it will adjust both widths to have the same value. And unsurprisingly you see this. Let's now have a look on display 5. Display 5 uh, here I'm still working with self.red and self.yellow. So I state here that from the left border of my super view I have y and then r, okay. If I look from a vertical point of view I have 80 points between the top and uh, r, r which is 100 points eighth, okay, and vertically it's 100 point away from the top of the view uh, for y, which is only 80 points eighth, okay, and here again I specify that width are the same, okay, and unsurprisingly I have this appearance, okay, so you see that it is smaller than this one. Display 6, uh, I'm still not using uh, the label. Uh, here uh, I still have uh, similar uh, constraints uh, y and then r uh, close together and up to the border of the enclosing view and uh, connected together. But here I state vertically that I have 80 points, then r for 100 um, points, then y, okay, then 60 point, and then the bottom of the view, okay. And finally I also state that the width are equal, and so with no surprise I see this, okay. So you see that you can, you can play with these constraints and have lots of variety of display with such constraints. And I remind you that when you change orientation, etc., uh, everything is still updated. And finally, the last display, the most complex one, because we are also using L, okay. So here I state vertical constraints for uh, R, Y, and L. Uh, R and Y are 100.8. Uh, and the egg of uh, the label is only 40 points. Then I have constraints here, okay, so it's from the left border 20 points, then you have R for 100 points, then you have L uh, connected to uh, R, then you have Y connected to L for 100 points, and then you have 20 points up to the other border of the view, not the screen, the upper view. And here I set uh, the two vertical distance from the top for R and Y to be 80 points and here uh, the vertical distance of V to be 110 points, okay. I add the constraints and I get this, okay. And of course if I change orientation this will be respected and in fact the width of the blue label will change, okay? Okay, let's have a few tricks. How can you change the layout with device, okay? Trick one by Master Yoda, conditional code you do. 
It means that you can change the constraints according to the selected device. Okay? But there is another trick. You can just have the same constraints, but only changing the dictionaries. And in particular, you can change the metric dictionary, because this is where you associate real values to symbolic values. Okay? And so you can have the same set of constraints and have adapted dictionaries for various types of devices. What about complex layout changes? Another trick from Master Yoda. Okay. Do you remember this exercise we had? Uh, this was the um, color chart stuff. Okay. In vertical, you have this layout, and when the device was in landscape mode, you had a totally different layout. But you can have a sort of hierarchy. You can imagine that this part of the layout, the upper part here, is embedded in a super view. And the second part is also embedded in a super view. And these ones, these three last ones, are in fact uh, three different autonomous uh, views. And in fact, I don't have to set up all these objects. I will have to set up these elements. Okay? For example, I can just change the layout according to this. And then I go from that to that. So you can use constraints locally in this view, locally in this view, and globally between these three views. Okay. So in fact, uh, there is an object for you that is called UI stack view. Okay. Uh, have a look at the fantastic manual for more detail that allow you to update groups of views. And in fact, this trick will be used in what choice. You will see that when we we'll, uh, have a look at what choice. Last Yoda's advice, uh, this is a picture taken from uh, the uh, documentation, uh, official documentation of Apple. Uh, you should better use the safe area, especially since uh, the appearance of this type of devices with this bevel. Okay. The safe area, in fact, is the zone where you are sure there are no possible problems, or sometimes even uh, some uh, tab bars. Okay. Uh, the idea is to avoid this. Okay, so it's an, an example I did on purpose. Okay, when I execute a set of code I provided to you uh, on an iPhone X, for example, uh, I give this. So you see that a part of the left square, the red square, uh, is not visible because uh, I have uh, the bevel here. Okay, so uh, in fact, I should have used the uh, safe area or to add uh, used uh, larger uh, distances. Uh, the problem is uh, if uh, you go on the other way, then it would be this square that would be affected. Okay, so you have to be careful in both directions according to uh, the portrait. If you are on portrait left or on portrait right, okay, uh, then the bevel will be on uh, the right or on your left. That's all. If you like kindergarten mode, if you liked geek mode, you will like auto layout. However, be careful because it's nice to define constraints, but conflict between constraints exists too. Okay. And you may have big fun. And I really encourage you to have a deep look at the Xcode console when you are implementing such an application with constraints because if there are problems between constraints, it will give you some explanations. Okay, so don't forget the console. You don't have to forget to draw your interface prior to elaborate the constraints. Why? Because you will deduce the constraints from a global idea that you have. And I think it's even more important to see how you can program the constraints. And uh, with time, you will discover that there are ways to program the constraints that will lead to more conflicts and others that will be easier. Okay? And also, as you observed, orientation management is totally for free. Okay? Of course, when organization does not change. If organization change, you have to change the set of constraints and you still have to use uh, view will transition to size, but the code you will invoke will 
not work similarly to the one you are used to write up to now. Have a look on the fantastic manual for more details. Thank you for your attention. See you later.